Isaiah chapter 38. Zechariah, the 38th book of the Bible. Picking up from chapter 37, chapter 36. In those days, doesn't give the exact time, but in those days of Sennacherib, was Hezekiah sick unto death, terminally ill. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him. Now in chapter 37, we see Isaiah passing messages. Now Isaiah comes before Hezekiah in his presence and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. I mean, a doctor's not saying that. God is saying through Isaiah. In the late 1990s, I had a lung doctor tell me and my wife, you got six months to live. It had been many, many years ago, by God's mercy and grace. I'm still going. So Hezekiah gets the word from God, death. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord, proper, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth. Is that your testimony? Could you honestly say that before God? And with a perfect heart. Now, Hezekiah wasn't 100%. Perfect means, you know what? You've done all the best that you could do. And you're a sinner. And you failed. And you falled. But your heart, your motivation was to do right. And have done that which is good in thy sight. Now, we're not talking about salvation, but how are you doing, Christian? I get people coming up to me all day, oh, I'm good. I'm good. Are you good according to what the Bible standard is good? Are you good according to the standard of God's good? Don't come to me as a lad to see in church, eh, and we're good, and, and, and you're carnal, you're worldly, and you make God sick. You can think you're good and deceive yourself. Now, if Hezekiah had lied, I don't think we would have got the response that God gave him. Yeah, I know many Christians and pastors, you know, pride and I'm good and no, you're not. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, go, say to Hezekiah, thus saith the Lord, the God of David. Um, the other night we met the God of Israel. Is your God the God of David? Mine is a Hebrew God, not a Polish God, not an Italian God, not an Ishmael God, not an American God, the God of David, the God of Israel, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's a big difference. Your eternal life rests upon which God you have. And shows thy father. Now David wasn't his father. David's back, 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 back. Way back there. <clears throat> but you know you don't see in the Bible, you don't see the word grandpa. Grandpa. Grand, I don't know grandparents. I know you got grandmother, whether Eunice or, or uh, um, uh, uh, Timothy's mother and grandmother, but you don't see grandpa. You don't see grandfather. And let me see. Let me check that out. Make sure. 
stuff one more thing. You see grandmother, but you don't see grandfather. Isn't that interesting? You just realized that. So father in the Bible can be grandparent. Jesus is father Abraham. Abraham's been gone for a long time. Joseph is called the father of Jesus, and Joseph is not the biological father of Jesus, but the adopted father of Jesus. I have heard thy prayer. Isn't that great? In two places the Psalms have recorded it. They have eyes to see, but they see not. They have ears that don't hear. They have mouths that don't speak. I have a God that hears the prayer of Hezekiah. He says, I've heard you, and I'm going to answer you. That's what it teaches me. God listens and hears. I have seen thy tears, eyes that see, ears that hear. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Now that's one troubling aspect of 15 years. Because Hezekiah is going to give birth to a child named Manasseh. And Manasseh is going to be the longest king reign in Judah. And he's going to be the most wicked king in Judah. And yet he will repent. I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Now, if you come back over here. Chapter Oh, chapter thirty seven. It says I'm gonna defend it. Oh, chapter thirty seven, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five. God tells Hezekiah. But he says for David's sake. Of verse 35, I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. That's why he says the God of David. What we just read. So, wait a minute. I will deliver thee the city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria is dead in chapter 37. 38 in those days. Sennacherib is still alive. Sennacherib still wants to attack Judah. Just because we got chapter 37 then chapter 38. Well, 38 must be after 37 by numbers, but by not, not by historical facts. 38 fits somewhere between the time of 37, 36 and 37. Where Sennacherib has his eye that hey, we're going to go to Judah and we're going to sack Judah. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord. And the Lord will do this thing that as he has spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degree. Which is going down the sundial of Ahaz. There's a there's in the kingdom a sundial made by Ahaz. All of this. Some people got a problem with that. Over in London, there's a big clock called Big Ben. There's no problem unless it's not London. We turn ten degrees by which degrees it was going down so the sun is going to go back 10 degrees this happens before Sennacherib comes and dies so Rav Shika has been scolding the God of Israel <coughs> excuse me the God of Hezekiah and before Sennacherib dies there's a big event in the star that's going to bring the Babylonians. They're going to look up at the sun and be like, 
Wait a minute, it's supposed to go that way. Why did it go that way? Time travel. What Hollywood's doing. Now, 10 degrees is the sundial has 360 degrees, as the circle does. A sundial is half, 180 degrees. One hour is 15 minutes. 10 degrees would equal 40 minutes. So that sundial went back 40 minutes. Joshua 10. Now, I could be wrong in those figures, so that's not... You know, you're going to go to hell if you don't believe it's 40 minutes. No. I could be wrong. Joshua 10, 12. And then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered the Amorites before the children of Israel. He said in the sight of the Lord, Son, stand still. Thou shalt be upon Gibeon. Thou art moon in the valley of action. The sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people avenged themselves upon their enemies. There was no date, verse 14, no day like before or after. The sun, in about B.C. 1451, the sun and the moon stopped one day. And B.C. 710, God said, all right, recall. So the sun stopped. And here's the sun going backwards. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hezekiah writes something down before when he had been sick, before he gets the news that God's going to heal him. So there was more than prayer. And was recovered of his sickness. All right, so after. When Hezekiah has found out he's sick. And then afterwards he, he's praying. He's seeking God and he writes. I said in the cutting off of my days. This may be the prayer. I shall go to the gates of the grave. I'm going to die. That's what Isaiah told him that God said was going to happen. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord. Now, this is Old Testament. This is not the church age. When they die, they don't go be absent with the Lord, uh, absent from the body and present with the Lord. They go into Abraham's bosom. Because Jesus Christ had not died yet, according to Scripture. Jesus had not been buried yet, according to Scripture. Jesus Christ had not been resurrected three days and three nights, according to Scripture. So Hezekiah can't be a Christian. Because he's not looking to the cross of Calvary. I'm going to the grave. Why if, Why didn't he say, if he was looking forward to Calvary, I'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved? Because he didn't see Calvary. Land of the living. I shall behold men no more <clears throat> with the inhabitants of the world. I'm going to die and that's it. No more men. I'm not going to see anybody. My age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent, a very temporary lodge. I have cut off like a weaver my life. Well, it's the undone, cut, finished. He will cut me off with piney sickness. And we'll learn it's a boil. From the day even to night will thou make an end of me. I'm going to die. I reckon until morning that as a lion, so, so will he break all my bones. That's what lions do. They devour the flesh and break the bone. 
So when Daniel, when the people are cast in the line, they break all their bones. From day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. Like a crane, a type of bird, only other place at Jeremiah 8, 7, or a swallow, type of bird, so did I chatter, the sound of the bird. I did mourn as a dove. My eyes fell with looking upward. That's his prayer. That's his prayer. Oh, Lord, I'm oppressed. Undertake. That's where you get the word undertaker. There it is. Now, the King James 1611 Bible. Undertaker. I mean, I know they don't call them anymore, but they did call them undertakers. Back when I was growing up, you know, the undertaker. King James 1611 Bible. I don't even want to see what modern Bibles do, and I don't care what modern Bibles do. What shall I say? He has both spoken to me through Isaiah, and himself has done it. I shall go softly all my ears in the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, by these things men live. And all these things is life of my spirit. God, he's so will thou recover me and make me to live. Isaiah's coming to Rome. All right, you got life. You got 15 more years. Life is in the hand of God, not doctors, not, vet, not uh, penicillin, not medication, not uh, shots, not vaccines. Behold, for peace I have great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul, deliver it from the pit of corruption. Death, grave, rotting. Martha says, four days, he stinketh. You see that corruption there? Go to Jonah. Find Jonah chapter 2. You know, I, I didn't corrupt. Jesus' body didn't corrupt. It held me from the pit of corruption. Verse 6. Jonah 2, 6. At the end of verse. Thou hast brought up my life from corruption. You know what Jonah happened? His body was decaying. In the words of Martha, he stinketh. I'm reading a book about World War I and how the body is just laying around. And that, I already know it's after four days. And they say, man, it's just the, the wretched smell. Corruption. Thou hast cast... All my sins behind thy back. The wages of sin is death. And I said, okay. God said, okay. In order to give him life, God to save for his sins. For the grave cannot praise thee. The Christian is, we're absent from the body and present with the Lord. Matter of fact, the Bible says, even while we're living in this flesh, we're seated in heavenly places. Not the Old Testament. They're nothing like the church age thing. Don't call them Christians. That man said, I'm going to go in the grave. And many of the saints in the Old Testament, I'm going to the grave and you'll never hear from me again until the resurrection of the dead. David said that. Paul says, if you ask him from the body, present with the Lord. Even in the tribulation period, it says that the souls that were beheaded were under the throne, and they cry out. You don't see that in the Old Testament. You know, when the Pope makes an official statement, they call it a bull. Great word. When some of these scholars and pastors make statements like, you know, they were Christians in the Old Testament, that's a bunch of Polish popey bull. Hezekiah is dying. God says you're going to die. Before he says, I'll give you 15. Before he says a 15 year. Where does he mention Calvary? Where does he put his faith in the blood of Jesus? Where does he mention the Messiah? And you know he looked forward to the Messiah. Because, hey, I'm going to go in the grave and one day I'm going to see you. That's what Job said.
The dead cannot ce celebrate. Hey, they're going to celebrate. They. Be a celebration when I die. Celebration when a Christian dies. You're there with the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the Old Testament saints. No. Imagine the day that Jesus came across that go from, from visiting hell and went over to Abraham's bosom. Imagine the celebration that dying thief had. But that was after the death, burial, and, and coming to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ even hasn't resurrected yet. They that go down to the pit, death, cannot Hope for thy truth. Jesus says, I'm the truth. I got hope when, I, when my body dies and the Lord tarries. He's my blessed hope. He's coming again. He's going to call my body out of the grave if I die. He said, what do you mean if you die? If the Lord tarries and the rapture happens after I die. You know, if this body dies, you better be, I'll be singing, glorifying God, no more aches and pains. The living, the living shall praise thee. But he, the death, in the Old Testament, death didn't praise God. As I do this day, he, man, he's thanking God. He's glorifying God. I got life. I ain't going to die. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. And there we will sing my song through the string. Of, he's, sing, he's writing songs. There's a song of Hezekiah. All the days of our life in the church of the Lord. It's not what it says. In the house of the Lord. Gee, what's that house of the Lord? It's the temple that's in Jerusalem. Not these all these little buildings scattered here and there. And in the book of Acts, the Christian <coughs> church buildings, yeah, they were houses. They were believers' houses, not the Lord's house. For Isaiah had said, Let them take a lump of figs and lay it, up, uh, lay it for a plaster upon the boil. So see, it's a boil. And a boil can be deadly. I've, done, I've had two boils in my life. And this is exactly what I did, Hezekiah and Isaiah. I took a lump of figs and, and helped heal it. Now my, my boils weren't deadly. But I found out when I had a boil and I looked at it, some boils are deadly. Hezekiah had a terminally ill uh, uh, boil, and he shall recover. Hezekiah also said, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? He said, Wait a minute, didn't the Lord just tell him 10 degrees? That was before the Lord told him it was a 10 degree. Hezekiah is recapping what he said when he found out he was going to die, when he was going to die, and then after Isaiah came in and said, Hezekiah, yeah? God says, you're not going to die. 15 more years. Amen. So when, what is it for the Jews require a sign? How do I know that the Lord's going to do that, Isaiah? Well, 10 degrees of sundown. And what we learn there is, sometimes the Bible is not in correct, timely order. 